if we are to be strong, let us be strong in the Lord Amen. and in the power of his might. <clears throat> I stand before you today, brethren, as a weak man. We're all weak. We're all men. <laughs> right? <clears throat> but I don't testify of my weakness. I testify today before you that his strength is made perfect in my weakness. <clears throat> I testify you today that when I am weak, then am I strong. My strength does not come from within me. My strength comes from being found in him. Amen. This is where my strength comes from. Amen. You have the same testimony, brethren, if you're in him. <clears throat> so if I'm to do anything meaningful, worthwhile, or to bear any kind of fruit, it's because I have taken up his yoke and learned of him. God is doing a work, and he is doing this work in a, fla in a flawed environment. He is doing his work in weak men, and in this he is glorified. Brethren, he which hath begun a good work in us will perform it. He will perform it. He will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> the work that he is doing in us is a work that is according to his will and of his good pleasure. So what a blessing it is to look back and find that from the very beginning, God was doing a work in us. To be honest, yeah, I, didn't, I did not really look forward to looking back in my life. <clears throat> didn't really want to do that. To remember all the things that I did. However, when I look back on my past to consider what God did, yeah. well, what he has done in my life, something stirred within me. Amen. There was a stirring within me. <laughs> I was reminded. I, had, I greatly rejoiced, brethren, when I considered the salvation that we can find and that we have found in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> For as long as I can remember, uh, I can see that God was working in my life. I was, uh, I had a worldly father, but God has formed me in the womb of a professing Christian and a believer. I don't think that was an accident or that just happened. And so, from the very beginning, for as long as I can remember, the scripture was at least read. It was at least read. Like, people, you know, they, they at least read the scriptures in my presence. And so the seed was planted from a very young age. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> I don't really want to get into too much detail about where I'm coming from or where I came out of or, or that, uh, that what... I crossed out a lot of paragraphs in this testimony because that wasn't edifying. See, I want to leave you, brethren, today with your eyes on the Lord. Amen. Not on the, the trial or the, 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 just the, the things of my life that, uh, that are just really discouraging. If, if, I, if, if we talk about that, it's going to be because it's going to exalt the Lord and, and what he did to deliver us out of that. Right? <clears throat> But to give you some brief background, because that does explain the, 
where I'm standing here right now. Uh, the majority of my life, I thought that salvation depended on me and the things that I had to do to be saved. Now, this is a foolish and wasteful way to live. <clears throat> it's, you're doing it all in vain. <clears throat> I actually lived as if I could get myself to heaven by being baptized, baptizing others, and doing good. The sad thing about this is that the whole time I was like trying to approach God on the basis of works, but yet, you know, I would quote to people what Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but by me. It's like, just, you know, it's ignorance. It's like, uh, you have the uh, foolish arrogance of ignorance. <laughs> That's what that was. <clears throat> so I'm here trying to convert everybody to the group that I was associated with. And it's not even really listening to what the truth of that scripture was or others around it or really not even knowing the, the gospel. <clears throat> You know, you just hit all these points on this checklist, and you're good. You go to heaven. It's interesting. You know, Jesus said, I'm the way to the Father. I don't know who said this originally. I, I hope they don't stop saying it, or we continue it on, because it's the truth that heaven is only relevant. It's only important. It's only good and in a place that we want to be, because God is there. If God's not there, then... <laughs> You know, it's just like being anywhere else, I guess. <clears throat> he said, I'm the way to the Father. <clears throat> now, uh, Brother Aaron brought something up earlier about, you know, glory and the different ideas about heaven and, and that, that people have. And I was actually, I believe this, that you know, people would say things, and I have like an, kind of like a little bit of an answer to what Brother Aaron said was uh, concerning this. You know, people will say, you know, think of the best thing you can think of, the, the, the grandest thing on your, that, that you can imagine with your mind and times it by a million. And so, of course, not, you know, of course, the flesh would take a hold of that. And he would say... So heaven must be filled with like mansions and baseball fields and, and reclining chairs and, and ice cold drinks and whatever. It, it just go on and on and on. See, that's, what, that's the answer to that. The flesh will take a hold of that. <clears throat> There's a scripture in uh, Psalm 37 and it's verse 4. And we're familiar with this. This is what the, 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 the verse actually says. I'm going to read that to you first. It says, Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine flesh, of thy heart, sorry. <clears throat> sorry, whoa. <laughs> of the heart. He will give you the desires of your heart. <laughs> now, that's the only thing that my flesh would hear, though, is he would give you the desires of your heart. And so here I am, I'm kind of living this, you know, living this way that I'm expecting God to just give me the desires of my heart. And so like my idea of heaven was like God was there, only God was like there on the side just kind of giving me whatever I wanted. Kind of like lived that way, like God's kind of there and he's just giving me whatever I wanted, whatever the desire of my heart was. Now I'm going to kind of, I want to explain what this verse really says. Delight thyself in the Lord. See, if you're, God will give you the desires of your heart when you desire him. <clears throat> so I, I praise God that he has given me a love for the truth. See, God never gave me a desire of my heart until I desired him. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> Jesus said this is the greatest commandment, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, mind, and strength. You know, he says all. 
with all of it, all the heart, all the soul, all the mind, all, the, all your strength, with all of it. So when you love him with all your heart, well, you have no more room in your heart for the love of this world, desires of the flesh. Love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart. <clears throat> Now, I just kind of want to <clears throat> fast forward. I just want to get to the part where I heard the gospel. I was saved by the gospel. So I don't want to talk a whole lot about where I came from. I want to talk about where God brought me, how he got me there, and where I am now. And, you know, we've come to a mountain We've come to Zion. <clears throat> this is where God has brought us. <clears throat> I was saved and am being saved by the gospel. And so God has, God has purposed that the gospel is his power unto salvation. The gospel is. <clears throat> I, uh, I grew up in a, in a church environment, surrounded by people who, who named the name of Christ. And some of them didn't just name it, but they were. However, others, they named the name of Christ, and they weren't. You know, the Lord knows those who are his. <clears throat> um, but God has used people throughout my life. He has placed people. Like, he's determined that it's the gospel that has the power of God unto salvation. And so what did God, what's God do? He puts preachers in our lives. I was surrounded by preachers. My grandfather was an evangelist in, in the church. And I grew up just in that environment. You know, revivals and, and different things. You know, the preachers would come, and we would meet around the table, and I just loved sitting there and just listening. In this environment, the scripture was was quoted. It was read. That seed was there. Now God would use people throughout my life to like, kind of like plant the seed, water the seed. You know, he gave me like Apollos' and Paul's in my life. Planters and waterers of this seed. <clears throat> so even though I was this, it's almost like despite all the ways I was living and the law, I was, I was, you know, living under law. Like God was, he was preparing me to receive something. He was like tilling the ground. He was like preparing me to receive something uh, that wouldn't be received by a law. <clears throat> He's placed men in my life like, they're kind of like uh, Jesus had he had the, John the Baptist preparing the way. So God kind of had these men like preparing the way for the gospel. Like maybe it was just one who would, who would preach a sermon littered with ulterior motives, littered with just nonsense, but the scripture was at least read in the beginning. They'd read their text and go off preaching something else. Later on, it was I went to Bible college, and I was taught how to be a preacher. <clears throat> I was uh, I was taught how to, you know, hermeneutics. I was taught these things like, you know, apologetics. Really, they're hindrances. So I was taught this. This way, over here. And then God brings me to a place where he, he gives me like a, like an Apollos who waters. I was, play, I was put in a place where Phil Sutton was the preacher. And so he kind of like watered. That kind of got me to a place where <clears throat> I was able to, to see past the law and, and kind of open me up for... Um, for what was up ahead, to, to prepare me for the gospel. Amen. 
Now, uh, I can remember to the point when I really heard the gospel preached. And it's like, and the form in which God just intends it to be preached. And like, in a pure form. Not like with the ulterior motives and, and not littered with men's wisdom. But it's just the gospel. There was a revival at the church and uh, <clears throat> I lived upstairs at the church there. In the building, I mean. And, <clears throat> and so like Sunday morning this revival was going to start and I walked downstairs and I opened the doors and there's a man standing there. And <clears throat> comes over and shakes my hand and I introduce, he introduces himself to me as Eric Olmsted. <laughs> and then the next thing out of his mouth is, I don't even remember what it was, I, it's, <clears throat> I don't remember the exact words, but it was scripture. He just quoted something to me and just said something and it was, the first thing that came to mind was like, who talks like that? What are you doing? <laughs> Don't you know we're in America? We talk like normal people. <laughs> nah. <clears throat> I praise God for men who see the great importance of, you know, preaching the word. Amen. Bringing the scripture. <clears throat> that revival started and the preacher was none other than Brother Pat Woods. <clears throat> His uh, theme that, that week was the, uh, the New Covenant. <clears throat> now, uh, it's refreshing to hear about the New Covenant when you've been living under the old. <clears throat> no, uh, <clears throat> when you hear that there's a better covenant, <clears throat> better promises, uh, better blood. <clears throat> God, uh, <clears throat> God sent preachers of the gospel at the right time in my life. It was at the right time. <clears throat> it wasn't too early. And it wasn't too late. Thank God. Amen. <clears throat> His, uh, his timing was right on time. I know that if I heard this message weeks or months before I did, I would have rejected it. <clears throat> would not have heard it. God was preparing me to receive this word when I did. <clears throat> God has done a great thing in, in our salvation. Uh, he has done something that we could not do on our own. He has taken us when we have been afar off. He brought us nigh by the blood of Christ. He's reconciled us. It's like a, <clears throat> you're living in the world without God, there is no peace. You can, have, you can be at peace with men. You can be at peace with yourself, whatever. I don't care. Without God, there is no peace. Amen. Ah, but he's made peace. 
He's made it when we were enemies. He's made us. He's made peace. He's brought us close. <clears throat> we were enemies because we were afar off. We left him. We turned from him. We ran away. He sought us out. He left the fold when there were 99 and went looking for us and brought us in. He took us. <clears throat> he made peace with us. Not between us. We have peace between us, brother. But that's not even the peace. That's not the peace in its fullness. He made peace between us, me and him. Between you and the Father. That's the peace that we have. Yeah. Not a world peace, but a peace between us and our Heavenly Father. Amen. That's a, wow. <clears throat> he has cleansed us. He has washed us. He has reconciled us. He has uh, redeemed us by his blood, by the blood of the Lamb. <clears throat> he has brought us nigh. He made us to sit with him in heavenly places. Amen. When we were like rolling in the rolling in the dirt, right? <laughs> the point of all this is God brought the increase. Paulus watered. Paul planted a Paulus water, but God brought the increase. That's what this is all about. God has brought the increase, and I want to tell you about God bringing the increase. <clears throat> At this time in my life, I entered into his work. I did. I, I, I put off finally putting doing my works. They didn't get me anywhere. They hindered me. They got me further from him. From my own righteousness, which was nothingness and I entered into his work we have entered into his work when we talk about he has purified uh, for himself a peculiar people zealous of good works he's talking about his works that we enter into we are co-laborers with him and so we are, we're not like going out and doing our own works now that we've been like saved we're just like we're being saved and and we're, we're, we're working with him. We have taken up his yoke. It's like we've been yoked together. He's doing work. And now we've been yoked with him. Amen. Now we're going to plow this field together. Amen. See, we have entered into his work. <clears throat> we have, uh, I can remember when I heard the gospel preached, that, uh, that, that really provoked me. That really uh, stirred within me a desire uh, to, to come to Christ, I, I knew who Jesus was. I, I really do believe that when I, was, when I was baptized the first time way back when I was 16, I wasn't immersed. I wasn't, like, brought into Christ. I wasn't converted to Jesus Christ. I wasn't. Nothing changed within me. Like, weeks before that, I was uh, a preacher. I heard a preacher say, God created men for his glory. Something to that effect. And I remember just rejecting that, hating that, hearing other things that were, that were truthful and just not because I thought it was about me. Everything was about me. It was all about what I was going to do and what I was doing. And, and it was all about God is work. He, everything he does is about me. And so I rejected these things. But yet I was still baptized because I was told that's what I needed to do. It's like, you need to do that. People would quote Acts 2.38 up and down all day long. And I never heard the rest of Acts chapter 2. I don't know. I didn't hear the sermon before I heard be baptized. I didn't. You know, Peter preached a sermon before he said that. They were pricked to the heart because of what was said in that sermon. It wasn't the message, be baptized, that pricked their hearts. 
It was Jesus Christ that pricked their hearts. <clears throat> so when I heard the gospel, yeah. I was pricked, yeah, amen. pierced to the heart. <clears throat> I uh, had a hard time sleeping. Looking back at that baptism, I had no comfort. Because I was like, if I die, I don't, I don't know. What happens? I just know I don't have any security. I don't know uh, where I am. I just, well, it's a long story short. Uh, I knew that Christ <clears throat> took away the sin of the world. And it's inappropriate to live in sin when he has taken away the sin of the world. Amen. Amen. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so I was buried. I was buried with him. I was crucified with him. Raised up with him. And this time, it wasn't about what I had to do. It was about me entering into what he was doing. <clears throat> it wasn't done there. <laughs> it wasn't the end of it. That was the beginning. That was me, like, being yoked with him. Now there's a work to do. <clears throat> and so, the past couple years... I was actually, at the time I was teaching at a Christian school, I was the associate evangelist. Who was it? Brother Jeremy said, what is an associate evangelist? I said, I don't know. <laughs> I was it. I, that's what I was. <laughs> but I don't know what that is. <laughs> so I know as much as you do, brother. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> but I started meeting with these brethren a little while after that. Before that, however... I remember thinking, I'm ashamed of thinking this and saying this, that um, my wife and I were talking. We're like, you know, we're going we're gonna to wait before we start meeting with them, before we contact them and, and see if they want to get together with us sometimes and just have Bible studies. We're just going to wait because we don't know as much as them. We don't, we don't like, we're like ashamed of our ignorance and, and we just, we're going to wait till we know a little bit more before we, we start meeting with them and that's, well, that's pride. That's something we had to crucify. We had to crucify that flesh, that pride. Uh, we, weren't, we weren't edified until we started meeting with them. And so uh, we, we would drive, and I would go and meet uh, with the brethren on Sunday afternoons. And uh, eventually I decided that I was going to stop my, where I was teaching and, and preaching and go and be with them full time, all the time, for eternity. We were going to be together. Our hearts were knit together, brother. Amen. As I met you, brethren, our hearts were knit together. Amen. <clears throat> They're all, it was all, we were all knit together, and it's God who does the knitting. <clears throat> Throughout this time, God gave me, like, Aaron and her. H-U-R, I don't know how to pronounce that. I say her. People are just confused when I say that. He gave me these people. Remember Aaron? Remember uh, the Amalekites attacked Israel? And, uh, and, and, and Moses told Joshua to take some men and go and, and fight, and he's going to go up on the hill. And he goes up on the hill, and he, he finds that when he raises, raises his hands that the Amalekites are pressed back, and then when he gets tired, or he puts his arms down, they, they, they advance. And so, uh, and so he notices this, but he was getting tired. He was getting tired. And so what happens is Aaron and her, they come over and they lift up his arms. They lift up. And so this is like God has placed these kind of people in my life. Now, uh, <clears throat> now there was times when I tried to stand on my own. And I tried to do things on my own. When you're standing there, you're like, you know, you can lose your balance. You can sway back and forth, right? You can be tossed to and fro. <laughs> so 
It's like God gave me the Sankowski brethren. <clears throat> you know, you can be tossed to and fro. It's like doctrine and stuff. And uh, I wrote an article, and uh, in this article, uh, I don't even remember what I wrote. I tried to forget it. I just remember that we were going to, it was going to be put into like the, the Mountaintop magazine. And Brother Pat had this thing all organized, and Brother Pat had articles in there, Brother Eric, uh, Sister Kayla, Sister Brandy, and they had this, all these articles, and mine was the last one, and it was, it was long. It was a few pages. And, uh, and so they had this article there, and, and so they, uh, <clears throat> they were the proofreaders. And they said, oh, they said, oh, yeah, they did all, like, the little corrections throughout this article, like, or throughout the, uh, the whole magazine, you know, like, little, you know, little things like, you know, Miss Period there or, like, you know, capitalization, you know, that. And then they, then they said, all of it is good. And then they got to my article. <laughs> and then, like, basically, like, everything was just nonsense. And uh, I just remember, I can't remember exactly the words that they used. I remember that... Uh, that it was like gently coming alongside of me and taking my arms and lifting me up and like pointing me to the Lord and saying, we have to consider him. Consider him. <clears throat> and so, uh, you know, the apostle and high priest of our profession, consider him. I didn't consider him all the time. <clears throat> he gave me like a Paul and Silas. Like, literally, he gave me a Paul and a Silas. <laughs> I can remember uh, when, I, when I watched the uh, refreshing water renewals from the back, like from the past, like the videos, and I remember seeing Brother Paul and Brother Silas preaching. And I remember thinking, because of where I came from and what I was used to, thinking, you know what, their dad wrote those sermons for them. <laughs> no teenager, no teenager. That age, they were younger then, that that age can, like, have profound thoughts like this. That's not possible. Well, with God, all anything's possible. And I thought that until I met them. And then I realized God is not restricted by, by gender, by age. By ability? And so the God, God has, he has placed these people in my life. That's really what my testimony is, is that uh, God has saved me by the gospel, and he's placed people in my life to preach the gospel, Amen. to edify me, to build me up. <clears throat> Remember Aaron, before they really lifted his arms up, they set him down. They went and put a rock underneath him, and they sat him down. Now, all the brethren I mentioned, that's what they have done. They have sat me down on a rock. They have established me. They have, they have brought me and put me on a rock that will not fade away, that will not, not roll away. It's not going to be like, you know, the wind's not going to come away and blow it away. I've been set on a rock. We have been set on a foundation, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> I just want to end with, with this, these last thoughts. <clears throat> faith, brethren, from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. When faith comes to us, we receive we are given faith and we receive faith. Faith is tried by fire. Faith is pleasing to God. And uh, you know, we have righteousness on the basis of faith. Faith is unto the praise and honor and glory. When we continue in it, when we keep the faith, it will be found to the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. All participating parties benefit at the end. Faith overcomes the world. We will receive the end of our faith. Just like we have received faith from the beginning, we will receive the end of our faith at the appearing of Jesus Christ. 
God's work in faith is this. He gives it, he tries it, he's pleased in it, and he gives the end of it. Men's participation in faith is that we receive it. When it comes, we keep the faith as he keeps us, and we receive the end of our faith. So praise God, we have a captain of our salvation, a shepherd and bishop of our souls. We are believing on Jesus, the author and finisher of faith. So from the moment we, it came to us, we can be sure that he will bring us to the point when we will receive the end of it. This is a good work being done in us. And that work will be performed, perfected in Christ, by Christ. So let us go on, brethren. Keeping the faith unto the end of our faith. Let us hope to the end. For the Lord Jesus Christ will appear.